What's going on, guys? Welcome to the second episode of the Endgame series. Avengers Endgame comes out April 26th. Thank you guys so much for watching the first episode of the Endgame series. Me talking about Iron Man with my good pal Austin Burke. Thank you guys so much for the comments and the likes and the support to Austin as well. You guys are awesome. And now we are in the second film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that is The Incredible Hulk. The film that a lot of people call the black sheep of the MCU, directed <laughs> by Louis Lettery and starring Edward Norton as Bruce Banner, the Hulk. And you also have Liv Tyler in there. You also got William Hurt as Thunderbolt Ross, Ty Burrell, and the great Tim Roth. And I got an awesome guest here with me today. That is Rama Screen. Rama, yeah. welcome back to the channel, man. How have you been? Thank you for having me on again. I appreciate it, Brother Ryan, and uh, looking forward to discussing The Incredible Hulk with you. Absolutely, man. I can't wait to get into this discussion, and thank you so much for taking part in this series, Rama. Now, before Rama and I get into this discussion, guys, we want you to get down below in the comments section, interacting with us, and be sure to answer the questions as well. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on The Incredible Hulk and your answers to these questions. Let's talk about The Incredible Hulk. This came out the same year as Iron Man. Iron Man kicked off the entire MCU with a bang. And now The Incredible Hulk comes out. Edward Norton was cast as Bruce Banner, the Hulk. And a lot of people didn't know what to expect going in. And this movie, eh, it's decent. It's okay. But I could definitely see why a lot of people would call this the black sheep of the MCU. That one movie that people forget, oh, wait, The Incredible Hulk is part of the MCU. Okay. But, uh, yeah, Rama, really quickly, uh, what are your thoughts on The Incredible Hulk? I remember the first time watching it in 2008 and loved it. I enjoyed it very much. And, and I think part of that is because um, I have still had that bitter aftertaste from that not so great Ang Lee Hulk movie in 2003. And so I came in with a low expectation. And then the yeah. version oh. was like, wow, <laughs> this is pretty fun, especially the, the fight with the abomination at the end. So Rama, the first question I wanted to ask you about the Incredible Hulk is, what was your first experience with it? When did you see this movie? Did you see it in theaters at home? And are you familiar with the Hulk from the comic books? What were your What was your first experience with this movie? Oh, that's a, that's that's a meaty question. Uh, so uh, I, I'll I'll give you this answer. I I watched it at an advanced screening in 2008. Um, I was not in part of the business yet at the time. I was not part of the film critics. So, uh, but I got to watch it early with with all of my fellow Marvel fans. And my experience with Hulk is that uh, growing up, I did not read Hulk comic books. Um, I, w I grew up a DC fan. I grew up a Superman fan. I Not till later on. I I'm a late bloomer when it comes to Marvel. Uh, but I did grow up watching the, uh, the, the 1970s, the Incredible Hulk series. They, they show the reruns uh, in, in my country, in Indonesia. So uh, when I watched this movie, the 2008 Incredible Hulk, uh, it really hit uh, the right notes for me because uh, the story, if, if you guys have seen the movie out there, you guys, uh, you would know that Edward Norton actually incorporates many of the elements from the 70s Incredible Hulk series. You know, the hitch, you know, him hitchhiking and then the, the whole <laughs> gamma ray thing uh, in the beginning. The introduction really <coughs> looked like the 70s series. And uh, that's very nostalgic to me, I, I think. Uh, the Lone Man, the Lone Man Bruce Banner. So, my first experience with the Hulk growing up is I uh, didn't really watch the 70s. Uh, cartoon with Lou Ferrigno, and I like this cameo in this movie, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, my experience with the Hulk has been with the MCU, the Avengers Hulk with Mark Ruffalo. And then when I first saw this movie, I didn't think I, I didn't see this in theaters. The first MCU film I saw was First Avenger, but seeing this along with Iron Man and seeing Edward Norton play this character, like, okay, this seems weird, but I'm into it. And I liked The Incredible Hulk back in the day, but, you know, constant rewatches, it it started to go down for me. It's an okay movie, but I thought Edward Norton, he was good as Bruce Banner the Hulk. And in my opinion, Mark Ruffalo is better, but still, this movie has a lot of good things to it, but there's a, a lot of things that don't work about it. And so, yeah, my first experience with this movie was just watching it at home and, you know, Growing a love for the character Hulk in the entire MCU. Let's talk about Edward Norton. I liked him as Bruce Banner, 
But yeah, you're right. Mark Ruffalo also knocks it out of the park. I think it's one of those cases when I remember uh, going to Comic Con in 2012 or 11, um, and Kevin Feige was on the panel, and one of the fans, you know, come up to the microphone and uh, pretty much shouts like, "Come on, bring back Ed Norton, uh, Ed Norton for Hulk," because you know uh, they know that uh, he's putting together the Avengers. And uh, that's the the same Comic Con where he announced that Mark Ruffalo will be replacing Ed, War Ed Norton. And Ruffalo is an Oscar worthy ca actor, just like Ed, Ed Norton is. So yeah. I, I was like, I did not mind the replacement at all, but I get why fans were <laughs> really frustrated at the time. But it's one of those cases where I remember when uh, uh, when Heath Ledger got cast as the Joker, people were like, what the Brokeback Mountain guy really? <laughs> but then you know, but but he he he, uh, he knocked it out of the park, and now we can't imagine Joker without Heath Ledger. So it's you know sometimes uh, you got to give some uh, replacement a, a chance. Yeah, we'll talk about Edward Norton in my next couple of questions. So yeah. next question is an Edward Norton question. Rama, sure. do do you think that Edward Norton is to blame for this movie not succeeding? Ooh. No, not really. I maybe I'm alone on this, but I actually believed him as Bruce Banner. Um uh, that you know the mild scientist that you know really is very concerned or worried that uh, he might uh, things might tick him off and get uh, he gets angry and gets out of control and then he might hurt somebody while he went while he is Hulk. Um he he really sells me on that. He really I think I I'm very convinced uh, about his performance. So as, as far as the movie itself why it didn't succeed or why it's the black sheep um I I think it's kind of preference uh fans might might think of it like uh the outsider, the misfit. <laughs> <laughs> and so they know, you know how we see it, it, misfits I'm like, "Oh man, there's something cool about misfits, you know, because they're like uh, the the guys who are not necessarily in the circle." Um but I, I think I, I don't want to blame. Uh, back to your question, I, I don't think I would blame Edward Norton for anything that's uh, Incredible Hulk's fault, in my opinion. I'm kind of on the different side to this one. Um, I think I'll Edward think. Norton was one of the reasons why this production in general was so messed up. Like, this movie has been in development for a long time. And once Marvel cast Edward Norton... He's a really hard actor to work with. He he is <laughs> out there. He's kind of perfect for the role if you think about it. He does yeah. get ticked off every once in a while, and many he was throwing fits with actors here and there. And he kind of took over as the director and the writer for this movie. If you look at the behind the scenes, so it could be a mix of him. It could be a mix of the writing team. Maybe does the whole kind of work as a solo movie or can he work more as a sidekick? And I think Marvel figured out where to have the Hulk. He fits in more as a sidekick. He wants everything to be him. He has his own ideas and Marvel <laughs> just didn't want to do it. <laughs> no, no, you might have a point, you know, uh, Kevin Feige might want to uh, work with people who not necessarily a yes man kind of person, but you know, a person who shares his vision. You know, he has this bigger arc, bigger master plan. Yeah. And if yeah. Ed Norton doesn't fit into that, you know, he'd be like, okay, we'll replace him. And uh, and I don't blame him for doing that. Rama, my next question to you is, why do you think this movie didn't work? Hulk, do you think Hulk works more as, uh, we were kind of talking about this, but uh, sure. why do you think this movie didn't work? Maybe do you think Hulk didn't really work as a solo film or a sidekick? What do you think? That is the argument, right? That is the million dollar question because, um, over the past what I want to say eight years or so, people be, uh, or the fans uh, since Mark Ruffalo got cast, people, the fans are like, when is the next Hulk solo movie? And yeah. you know they they incorporated Planet Hulk, Hulk into Thor Ragnarok. Does Hulk Hulk work as a solo or as a sidekick? I want to say both. I, I would love to see another Hulk mo solo <laughs> movie. Um, I know that's not possible because I think Universal Pictures owns the distribution rights. It seems that they're not putting the same faith in the character Hulk. Like they're saying like, oh, I don't know if it's going to be commercially successful. Well, uh, you just had Ang Lee and then Ed Norton. Like, you know, th those are not really the good standard to measure yeah. measure the character by. Let's give him another shot. In, at least that's what, in my opinion. I like the way they took the Hulk in The Avengers. Like he works more as that comedic sigh relief and also mm. just to kick a lot of ass and in, in the the avengers in particular he worked so well in the avengers and i could definitely see why they recasted uh 
Edward Norton with Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo is a great Hulk, and Ed Norton's a good Hulk, but I could definitely see why they decided to take this direction. The tone was just like really dark and serious, like a DC movie serious. But yeah, I just like the, the comedic Hulk better. That's just my opinion. I think I can go for another round of Lone Man, Bruce Banner, and Hulk. You know that whole thing where... He, mm -hmm. he's has to, he has to hide from society basically that same arc i think i can go for another round of that i'm not i'm not tired of that just yet what is your favorite scene in this movie by far uh. <laughs> if you can pick one scene what's your favorite oh that's easy hulk smash uh right near the end <laughs> yeah hulk smash <laughs> i think it was is that after he he claps and uh, and uh, the wind kind of blows out the fire uh, you know, because the helicopter was Yeah, burning. that helicopter. Yeah. Hulk smash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. I geek out at that because, you know, we don't we didn't get that in the 2003 movie with Ang Lee, at least Hel to my recollection. Yes, 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 yes. I love that Hulk and Abomination fight, but I kind of figured you would pick it. So my, I think <laughs> my favorite scene is yes. the, co the college scene when they're – with all those military trucks coming in and shooting Hulk and the high beams boo, when he's stuck <laughs> in that. And I think that might be my favorite scene in the movie. I just love the action in that film. And Hulk just really is awesome. Like the first scene when you see the Hulk for the first time in the soda factory, that was awesome. What's your least favorite scene in this movie, Rama? Oh, there you go. <laughs> I, I <don't, laughs> there's a lot about this movie that just don't work for it you know or, or for us the audiences number one um least favorite i i don't know maybe you disagree with me on this but uh tim roth uh he's a great actor but his character is so one-dimensional not a very meaty Ooh. not a very you know interesting villain you know it's just like <laughs> what, what is this you know that's like what what is his drive is this guy it's just his ego. That's all. It's just his ego, and that's it. And then, um, and and Liv Tyler too. I know, you know, her character Betty Ross supposed to be like this smart scientist and an independent, strong woman. But in this one, it is he? She's second fiddle to Ed, yeah. and uh, she does nothing but uh, for the melancholy scenes. And those melancholy scenes also are too Hollywoody for my taste. It, terrible writing for the romance parts of this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That leads into my least favorite scene. It's it's the romance by far with uh, Liv Tyler. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the first scene when they they see each other again. Like, Liv Tyler, she's a great actress. I love Liv Tyler in Lord of the Rings. She's really yes. good as Eowyn. But she her chemistry with Edward Norton in this movie might be up there. Might be up there with Natalie Portman and Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> Rewatching this movie. Are you okay? <laughs> She's like a mother. Like what? <laughs> yeah. And you know, and then, the one I said, Hollywoody. It's too like a generic. When they kiss in the rain, I was like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just did buy it. Oh my god. Anything else that you don't like about the movie? Uh, yeah, I I like uh, Abomination. He's okay. I definitely oh, okay. can see where you're coming from, but he's not a great villain, but I think he's cool enough. Tim Roth is kind of cool in the role. He does lose a lot of fights in this movie, but, you know, <laughs> he's okay. Not the best villain. In, in, in entertain him. And, you know, the, uh, to add uh, to my point earlier also, the reason why I still enjoy this film overall uh, despite its many downsides, obviously, <laughs> it's because yeah. you know after like three pretty boring Star Wars prequels, mm -hmm. and then and then Star Wars: The Force Awakens comes along, and people criticize it for like, man, this is just like a rehash. They even have the canteen bar, but I yeah. enjoyed it because after such a really terrible prequels, you know, you come in and you're like, oh my god, it gets exciting again. So yeah. again, back to my point, it's like after a boring 2003 Hulk movie. And then you see Abomination just, you know, duking it out with Hulk. And that kind of overshadows everything that's, you know, flawed about the Incredible Hulk movie. Because, you know, just like, oh, my God, I, I didn't I didn't get <laughs> this in the 2003 movie. Now we get it. Do you think this romance between Edward Norton and Betty Wass is the weakest romance in the MCU? <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Overall, yeah. <laughs> Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I want to say yes. The other least favorite of mine, uh, I think uh, Tony Stark and Pepper in Iron Man 3. 
you know, when 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 uh, Pepper Potts became like invincible, like super yeah. strong. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I like a strong, independent woman, but like she's just like a robot. I don't she know. She came out of nowhere. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> you get like a superhuman. I was like, "What the heck?" So that that kind of threw me off as well. So that's also another. Le- but is this the least favorite? Probably, probably. Yeah, 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 <laughs> the, yeah. This is for sure my weakest romance. I just d- don't feel the chemistry at all between Edward Norton and Liv Tyler. It's it's just not there, and it didn't work. And yeah, Natalie Portman and Chris Hemsworth isn't the best oh, yes. as well. But yeah, yeah, I don't feel that as well. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely the weakest romance, in my opinion. Rama, we've already answered this question, basically. I, I was going to ask, which is, which is the more interesting villain, Abomination or Thunderbolt Ross? Oh, that's a, no, that's a good question. I, I, um, which is the more uh, interesting one? Here's the thing, though. It's sad that because this movie is, is the black sheep or the misfit or the outsider or the one that you said uh, Kevin, Kevin Feige doesn't want to talk about it anymore, um, that we don't get to see Thunderbolt Ross anymore in MCU, you know, because at the end of the Incredible Hulk, it was hinted, right? Tony Stark comes to the bar. Yeah, then he becomes to, Secret- uh, yeah, exactly. Secretary of State Ross. Exactly. It's like we might see, um, what's his name? William Hurt in Mortal William MCU. Hurt. He came back in Civil War and Infinity War. Yeah, that's right. He did came back, but not in a in a very significant role, not a very big one. Um, not, yeah, not, yeah. A, not a not a very villainy villainy one. You know, this one in the Incredible Hulk is a villain. But um, mm. uh, so I'm kind of sad because you know I was like, oh, if only we get, we get to explore the character again. But I guess we'll we'll never get that. Um, uh, between the two, Abomination or uh, Bolt. Uh, I'm sorry, Th- uh, Ross. I want to say Ross. Yes. Yeah, I want to say I just call him Ross, General Ross. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Abomination is basically just um, a muscle guy, you know. That's what he, he just is. wants to. He just wants to win a fight. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, that was so cheesy. When Thunderbolt Ross is like, "How do you feel? Hungry for round three. <laughs> that is so cheesy. <laughs> I was just laughing out loud. The script is definitely one of the weakest mm-hmm. parts of this movie. Yeah. I love Tim Roth. He's so much better in Tarantino movies. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, I like Ross more. Ross is cool. I think William Hurt's way better than Sam Elliott. Um, oh, yeah. Ross. But uh, yeah, um, it was cool they brought him back for Civil War and Infinity War, even though he doesn't have a huge role. But uh, yeah, out of those two, definitely Ross is more interesting. Agreed. Um, yeah. The next question. Would Edward Norton fit in with the current Avengers today, or is Mark Ruffalo the perfect replacement? Do you think Edward Norton could fit in with RDJ and all of them? Oh, you're saying that if they hadn't replaced him, if they he... hadn't replaced him, would he fit in? Yeah, that's a good question. I would. Mm. Um, man, you know the thing is with Marvel, man, they have so many A A stars. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> you you would think that they're. You would think that there would be like a clash or a war of egos, right? Because they got, they're all leading stars. Every one of them can lead mm-hmm. in their own movies. Um, yeah. And and with the reputation, like you said about Edward Norton, uh, you know, behind the scenes, how people work with them. Um, I don't know if they. I, I I'm not sure that if they would get along. I'm sure we would hear some dramas about it. Yeah, it could turn into the DCU right there. <laughs> the, yeah, <laughs> they made the right choice. They made the right choice for sure. I think Mark Ruffalo is the kind of guy who's just like, I come in, clock in, do the work, and clock out. You know, that's that's the kind of guy he is. Yeah, yeah, this would not have worked. Edward Norton would not have worked. <laughs> um, uh, here's an interesting question, Rama. If you're a ranking kind of guy, where does yeah. this film? What does this film rank in your MCU ranking? If you were to think about it, there's 20 MCU movies right now. What do you think this would rank? There's 20 already. Damn. Time 20, flies. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I want to say I hated the Thor movies, so I would put like Thor Ragnarok in the bottom, and then Thor uh, the Dark World after that, and then uh, probably the Incredible Hulk. And so then 18. The, okay. Yeah, and then the first Thor. Uh, so yeah, number 18 would be it for me. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my 18 as well. 18. It goes like um goes Iron Man 2, then Thor the Dark World, then Incredible Hulk. So uh, that's my it's my 18. Yeah. Yeah, Iron Man Iron Man 2 is definitely down there. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll have to see if 
Iron Man 2 was worse or Thor The Dark World? Like, it could switch back and forth. That's see, right. Unreal. It, and Iron Man 2 is next. Oh, gosh. All right, <laughs> 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 <Hey>, Rama. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. All right, Rama. <laughs> Rama, here is the final question, man, that you had some time to think about. How do you think The Incredible Hulk 2008 will affect the end game? Uh, I think the answer to that is a slim to none. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say me? <laughs> Can we just agree it's not? <laughs> I wish I was uh, in, a, in, a, in an alternate universe, you know, that could affect yeah. the, the overall end game. But uh, they they seem to, like you said, again, they seem to have moved on yeah. from the Incredible Hulk 2. Yeah. I mean, on the Incredible Hulk 2008 movie. They, they've moved on from that whole arc and now it's just like a, another new beast. Yeah, if you think about it, Ross is the only character that exists in that movie now. So, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't know if he turned to dust yet, but <laughs> I think we could kind of agree this movie's not really going to affect the end game much at all. That does it, guys, for our discussion on the Incredible Hulk. Rama, thank you so much, man, for joining me and talking in depth about the Incredible Hulk. Thank you for those awesome answers to those great questions and. Guys, yes, let us know your answers down below in the comment section. We want to hear from you, most importantly. And Rama, before we close out the video, we got to give you the awesome shout out you deserve. Where can people find you on your social media? Yes, you can find me on Twitter, Rama Screen with two S R A M A S S, -S R E E N. Or you can simply subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ramascreen1. Please go. Please go subscribe to Ramascreen. He does a lot of interviews with great celebrities, and he does a lot of movie reviews all early. He's part of the press. So go check out Rama. He's an awesome dude. And Rama, thank, thank you, you so much again for joining me for this. Thank you guys so much for watching our talk on The Incredible Hulk. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe today to me as well as Mr. Rama Screen. His channel link is in the description below. Stay tuned to the next episode of the Endgame series, guys, because it's going to be, oh boy, Iron Man 2. And joining me for Iron Man 2 is Russell Howell from Howell's Hollywood Reviews. That'll be a very interesting discussion for sure. All my social media links are in the description down below. Click that notification bell on your way out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, Hulk Smash!